If you know, you it's know. Rich B. It's Rich Beans. It's RBZ. It's Kalia. Hello, it's Kaya. It's your boy, Trey B. Carr, a.k.a. Trey. 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 Another one. Another one. Another one. Well, hello and welcome to another episode of Another Another One. One. All right, so let's just go ahead and let you guys know that we're going to, you know, jump right into some really good information because as you know, right now, we are doing our family business series. Yes. Whoop, 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 whoop. Get excited. Get lit. It's for the best. We know that you want to start a family business because that's why you're listening to this, right? Or you might be listening because because you like us. Maybe that's why. That or you why. want to start a business that can lead to a family business. It might be an individual business right now. Yeah. And that's not a bad thing because I, I think all of these um, episodes in this series will relate to any business but there's some things that will be really dialed in for family businesses. All right. So after the break, we're going to get right into starting a family business. Episode one. It's for the best to achieve your dream. Have you ever took a leap of faith? Do you know that your words have power? Do you support your friends? Team Bees has merch that speaks to all of these questions with powerful statements like love is greater than everything. Go to teambees.com slash shop to order your Team Bees merch today. That's T-E-A-M-B-Z dot com slash shop and get a 5% discount throughout the shop by using the coupon code high five. That's coupon code H-I-G-H-F-I-V-E. Apple Pay is also accepted at checkout. All right. So we appreciate you coming back and um, listening and everything and wanting to get into these details. And here we go. So we've made a couple of high level points that we want to get across to you guys for this episode. And so let's just go ahead and kick it off. When you have a family business or a business in general, one of the biggest things that you have to do is have an ultimate goal because it makes no sense to start a business with no goal in mind. Because why are you doing what you're doing? If if you are literally stepping into it and it's like, well, I'm just, you know, I want to start this business because... I hear like my friends are starting businesses and my parents have a business and I just feel like I need to have a business too because is that it's not the a goal, wave. Though? Is that not a goal? My goal is to have a business, so I'm gonna just have a business and that's gonna be my that's my it goal. It has to be a little bit more specific than that. Mm, okay. I think. Yeah. So that you can envision what you're looking for. It's if you can see in your mind where you where you think this is gonna end up or where you want it to end up or where you know it's gonna be. I think it will be easier to achieve that because you can see it. You know what I'm saying? Rather than just some well, open ended thing. Well, let, let me let me rephrase that then, because even though we said have an ultimate goal, it will be the equivalent of what is your intent? So let's say Apple, right? Apple was to change the world, right? What was it? Was it to change the world? I have no idea. Um, to make a dent remember. in the world? I think it said to make a dent in the world, right? Or to make a dent in the universe. I think that it, it, it kind of started that way. So what is that thing? Like with uh, our business, so like Dynamic Works, right? The ultimate goal was to give people access to high-level production um, without having to pay high-level prices. That, that's what, that was the ultimate goal when it initiated, you know? So that, I mean, for me... I'm like, if that's the ultimate goal, now I know how I need to work back from that, right? So if if I'm working back from that, then I'm I'm gonna find out. Okay, so if I want to charge people less than what other people are charging, but give them high level production, first I have to have 
my products and services down. Mm-hmm. Right? So my products and services have to align with my ultimate goal. Right. So typically, if you have a business, you're going to have a product or service. If I'm. So typically, if you have a business, you're going to have a product or a service. Um, if, if I'm not wrong, right? Is there no, any other kind of business? No. There's no other kind of business where it's not a product or a service. No. Okay. No, I don't so, think so that's what you got to figure out. So you have a goal. You Your goal is to have $10,000. But now you need to know how to get to the goal. It's making a business, starting a business. So choose your product and service or services, products or services, and stick to that. Mm-hmm. See, now, now something you said makes me want to jump in because you said that um, if you, you have a product or a service or whatever and your ultimate goal is to make $10,000, I do think that money can be an ultimate goal. But, I mean, excuse me, I don't think it could be an ultimate goal. I think it could be a milestone or something that you want to achieve, but I don't really feel like that's the ultimate goal for you to start a business, just to achieve, ten, just to make $10,000. That, that sh- money shouldn't be your driving money factor. Money shouldn't be the driving factor. I mean, t- of course, you want to make money. Don't get me wrong, because nobody wants to work for free, right? But I don't think money should be the ultimate goal, you know? Yeah. Um, you know, changing, um, giving people access to clean water, right? I mean, because that's... Uh, something that's bigger than you and you are what you're doing your product or your service is able to move the needle on that to achieving everybody being able to get clean free water or whatever whatever your you know um, goal is goal is exactly right so um, i mean do y'all think that is that that yeah i think money can sometimes actually hinder you reaching the goal, your money goal, simply because you're thinking so much about the money aspect, you're not creating new things. It's not something that you typically, if it's something that you're passionate about, you'll do it already. Mm. But because you're doing it because you want to make some money and you don't see the money, you're not motivated. Yeah. Right. 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 I mean, cause then you're not really even acknowledging those small milestones that you're achieving. Right. You know, because you're so stuck on whether I'm seeing the money. Is mm-hmm. the money coming? Where's the money coming at? And, and the money and, might not come automatically. No, the money. But when the, it's something you want to do, the money just comes. The money comes as a result of changing uh, something or, or or bringing value to something. So the more value you're able to bring, the more people be willing to pay you. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like that, that's that's one of those little keys right there. So keep adding value to people, then people will pay you for that value add. Or um, or fix a problem they have. Exactly. One of, um, I guess you could say, a mantra that I have is that money is a, oh gosh, is, what is the, I forgot the word. Money is a... Byproduct. Yes, thank you. That's exactly the word. Money is a byproduct of my passion. So if you're passionate about something, the money's just gonna come as you continue to do what you're passionate, passionate about. about. Right. That's good stuff. Yes. And so when you're doing something that you're passionate about, because this is on the other side of that, so it's like somebody that just loves to clean up preschools. And I just love to do that so much. And I'm just going to do that. And that's all I'm going to ever do. And you don't have any structure to it. Sometimes you got to go ahead and put the structure in place so you can make stuff happen. You're trying to start a business. You're trying to create revenue from things you already like to do. So you got to start making some some plans. Yep. Right. Now, I mean, I think think the only way that you would start a business doing something that you really don't like to do is if you're just innately good at it. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So there's things that, that there, there are people who are good at some things. They don't really like to do those things, but they're really good at it. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, somebody says, well, you know, you can make some money doing this. And you're like, oh, I can make some money. And I think that's what drives people who have money goals. Mm-hmm. So if your goal is $10,000, then you're more apt to want to do something that you're good at or comes easy to you, but you don't like to do it because I'm just trying to achieve my ten thousand dollar goal or whatever that number is right so when you start making these plans 
it's got to be things that you can put up and that you can see so that you can when you're hitting these goals you can like you know see your growth from where you started to where not where you're ending per se because i mean unless you just cut your business right so a three-month plan a six-month plan a one-year plan five-year plan these are good to have in place so that you always know what's happening next Mm -hmm. and you never get stagnant or um plateau in your business journey and a lot of times what happens is when you make these goals so most times you're hitting them before your mark right or whenever you have your um i guess your end date to have this goal by and you're doing it without even realizing it yeah yeah, I think I think that's a product of, you know, having an intention of what you want to do and having a blueprint, writing it out, you know, making that plan. Because, I mean, you can't build anything without a plan. You got to have some sort of a plan, even if it's a rough plan, even if it's a plan that, you know, you're willing to kind of, you know, weave and bob through. You still have to have some sort of plan on tap. Right. Or without it, you just taying in the wind. Oh, yeah, you're going to tay in the wind. But that plan will also help you to solidify your product and your service and or your service. So if you have, let's say, let's say you have a three month goal and this product needs to, you know, I want to make sure that I have all of my legal stuff done. I want to make sure that I have, you know, um, my product design down. I want to start having all of my um, marketing artwork and all of that kind of stuff, all my branding done all within that three month time time span. If that's the case, then when you're when you're making that plan, you're also saying, well, what does it have to look like? What, what, what does this thing have to do? You, you like starting to break down the specifics because now I have to try to figure out how to get it across to my audience. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like people have to be able to understand what it is that I'm doing, what product I have, what service that, that I have um, and be able to understand it in a way that they'll want to get it. Mm-hmm. So you can, like you can't just start off and say, um, okay, so I'm going to sell, I don't even know, like um, floorboards, right? I'm going to sell some floorboards. Now, you know, okay, that's well and good. And you might get one or two people that'll get what that floorboard is supposed to be or whatever. But your intent is to have, you know, floorboards that stay clean by themselves or, or it, nice. um, you know, <laughs> Sounds I mean, like I need that. <laughs> it, it, it might, it might be heated. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's it's this floorboard that that holds energy by itself and it heats up and keeps you warm when it's cold and cold when it's warm all by itself. No plugs, no nothing. It just is some kind of thing that you know how to put together. Some patent, some kind of patent. Yeah. And if it's something that is the technology or something that is totally not out, then patent that bad boy. Send it, send it and get it patent because people will get it and they'll be like, oh, wow. And realize it's not patent and boom, there goes your your um money so um but but if you have that floorboard and you are you know you just you just said your goals right i wanted to be warm when it's cold i wanted to be cold when it's warm all that kind of stuff which basically means that now i've created my um my dream or what have you of what it's to be what it's to do and then you work back from that and after after you do that then it's important to understand or know exactly why you're doing it yeah what is what is your why what is your driving force what is the the reason behind you doing what you are doing or the reason you're starting this business some people start a family business because they want to um build a legacy they want to create something that can be passed down generation to generation Mm -hmm. so ultimately that is their driving force that is their why some people start a business because they want to prove to themselves you know that they are able to start and finish something Um, And it's important to have a why because in those moments where you're frustrated, in those moments where you feel like giving up, you can turn to your why and and be reminded of what you're doing it for. It's even like Mm -hmm. when you're working out, you know, it's one thing when you work out because, you know, it's a superficial reason. It's another reason when you're working out because it's something that 
you have to do for your your livelihood or something that you have to do because you have to strengthen yourself that why is different that pushes you more when you're out on the field you know than something that's just flight it's something that you know passes somebody yeah you know so make sure that you have a why know what your why is so you can pull on that is that is that why the what would you say that that why is the way that you achieve your ultimate goal you know what i mean so like, well, I mean, I like it contributes to it yeah. i don't think it's the that can just be another the force only thing to yeah. right. the driving the yeah. driving to what that ultimate goal is right but don't let any of the bigger goals or bigger plans intimidate you just you know set a goal small goal for the week or for your day or every other day or whatever so that it's something that you can achieve something you know you can get done it's like okay well i know i can make two floorboards a day and so you you make that and then by the end of the month you've got um can't 60. Do math. <laughs> yeah, 60, <laughs> 60 floorboards and all you needed was 20 for the month and it's like bam i already went over my goal and i'm well into next month's floorboards just set small goals in addition to those longer ones, just so you can see that pro- progression. Mm-hmm. Back to when um, mommy was talking about knowing why you're doing what you're doing, that um, because that that's really a uh, important key because there will be times when, while being an entrepreneur and having your family business that you will be like, man, just bump this. Yep. I'm about to go get oh, me a yeah. job. Exactly. Oh, because man. it's so much, it, it seems like it's so much easier to just let me go apply to this job. Let me go sit up in this person's building for eight, 10. Sometimes people be pulling 15 hour shifts yep. and get money that way. But you're not, are you really doing something that you love that you love? Are you doing something that you're passionate about? Like right. is that even going to get you where you're trying to be? Right. And if your motivating force is that you want to create a legacy for your family, then that won't happen if you're working for someone else. You're helping someone else someone else's legacy legacy. Mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying so even though it's easy even though you know for the most part people can just bounce out and you know fill out the application and go you know pick up a check somewhere else the blood the sweat and the tears that you put into something that's your own knowing that you're setting up something for your children's children and they gonna know you know grandma grandpa whatever who started this business that makes it a little different you're willing to stay up a little bit later at night you know what i'm saying Mm -hmm. (laughs) Right. And in those moments, you should literally think about all the pros of having your own business. Right. Literally think about them right then when you're like, ooh, let me just go uh, get a nine to five. Literally just think about, hmm, well, if I have my own business, I could wake up at 10. <laughs> you don't have to have a nine to five. Or, ooh, if I have my own business, I don't even got to leave my house. Or I said when I want to go on a vacation. Or this, 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 and this. It's like all the flexibility and all the... Um, Availability Right You have For your own life And you're not Running your life Based on Your manager Right Right And Now there Oh No go ahead Well I I was just gonna say I I don't think that it's It's not a bad thing Mm -hmm. If you have to Work for someone else To maintain your livelihood While you're Starting your family business That's not That's not a bad thing Because Everybody doesn't have The drive Off the gate to go hard and be able to get up the money immediately within that same first 30 days or the means by which right because i mean you do have um the the costs that it or excuse me the investment that you have to put in to start your family business almost all businesses are going to come with some overhead to start with right and so if you have to achieve that by working for someone else it's not a bad thing Right. Right. Because we had Dynamic Works and while Dynamic Works was starting, um, even throughout some of the years that Dynamic Works has been in existence, I've worked a job and it helped, you know, in maintaining the household during that time for me to work. And then we also have to be realistic, although some people um, may want to have a business, everybody is not cut out 
to be an entrepreneur. No. And mm. when you're okay with that and when you're willing to admit that to yourself, then it's okay. It's, it saves you time. It saves you effort. It saves you money. And I guess that's that's the thing to just kind of be able to look and assess and see, okay, is this something that I really want to do? Is this something that I feel that I can do? Right. But but a lot of times you'll surprise yourself. You'll surprise yourself if you step out there and actually go to start it and do what you got to do to get it up and running. Most people can. But one thing that you said was, you know, when you realize that um, owning a business is not for you, sometimes it just might be the business that you started is not for you. Right. That space that you were going into might not be a space for you. But also don't get it twisted like being somebody's number two is not a bad thing. It can be a great thing if you realize that I'm I'm not fit to run a business, but I can help someone else who's starting a business because that's not a bad thing either, either, because then you may be able to if you're helping them start, then they may be in partnership. You know what I mean? So it still comes to the fact that you're starting a business, but it would just be a partner with someone else who may have more of the of what it takes to run a business. Right. And that's not that's not a bad thing. You know, partnership also helps you to achieve your goal faster. And that's what that's what a family business is all about. Exactly. Honestly, because if you had like for us, we have five people in our family and one person, which we've tried it, one person working this business is hard. Two people, it started to get easier. Three people, it started to really get get some legs on it. Four people, we were really in, like, we were really making waves. And now that all five are, like, running in this race together, there's, there's, it's unlimited what we can actually do. There ends up not being a limit. So that's what a family business is all about. So just take these nice wrapped up in a pretty bow five little things in starting your family business of course there's more things but just remember these five have an ultimate goal know your product or your service have a three month six month one year and or five year plan know why you're doing what you're doing and of course last but not least do something that you love something you enjoy because it makes a huge difference so we appreciate you for your time listening in this week. Um, we're going to go ahead and th- this, in- this concludes episode one of starting a family business. We'll be right back at you next week with the next installment in this series, which we're calling how to manage a family business. From the coolest family in podcasting and on the Internet, period. Team Bees. We out. Follow us on Instagram and Facebook at Team Bees. To keep the show going, partner with us at teambees.com slash partner. We out.